Well, everyone, here we are, finally. This hunt took me many attempts, and this one turned out to be a bit long. I hope that's alright. If nothing else, it makes the video about as long as the Akantor one. I'm not a speedrunner, and my videos aren't meant to cater to speedrunners, to be honest. This voiceover isn't live with this footage. I'm recording it after the fact. I'm gonna try and do voiceovers for the Portable 3rd series, and I think I'll do a mix of in-hunt and post-hunt commentary. There are a couple of moves I didn't cover in the moves section because they're not terribly relevant, but you should still be aware of them. Specifically his bite and his charge, both are just like a Cantor's. Really, Yukonlos should be mostly familiar to you if you have any experience with a Cantor, and by now you should at least know how to beat a Cantor. There are, of course, some key differences, but some of the differences actually make Yukonlos easier to deal with, depending on the situation. So as you can see here, this is Yukonlos going under the ice. He won't always do the swim, sometimes he'll just burrow underneath like a Diablos. I had it recommended to use paintballs to track him under the ice, and honestly that's a great idea. This also works for a Cantor, of course, and um, if you have trouble keeping track of him, you should definitely consider doing that. Be aware when he does his ice beam attack that there is a small roar around him that will knock you back. Just be aware of that. Also, the ice that gets flung up and around. It can either go up and fall down, or it can go outwards. So, if you see him doing the beam, try to be to the side of Yukonlos, rather than anywhere in front of him, because you may be hit by chunks of ice or the beam itself. And you really do not want to get hit by the beam. I think it's his most damaging attack. So, the general theme of this fight is you want to be trying to focus on his head, since that's the best hit zone. A good secondary target will be his back legs. Staggering his back legs one time will cause him to flinch, and staggering it any time afterwards will cause him to fall over and struggle for a bit. His tail sweep attack is honestly like... If you're not in a bad position, it's a pretty good attack to give you an opening to either reposition or attack his head. His head will always sort of end up around his right arm, so be sure to try to attack near there. And give his tail a wide berth. You don't want to be hit by either the tail or the snow that it like kicks up. It'll, it'll snowman you, which is not good. Here we can see his actual swim move, and as you can see there, I just kind of walk over it as Yukimos' head goes down under the ice. He only does that one time, so you really gotta get the timing right. When you see him go under the ice, try to get close to where he went down, but not too close so you don't get hit by him when he surfaces. It looks pretty tricky, but honestly it's not. It's pretty consistent, you can still be hit, and you gotta be careful and you gotta practice it, but I highly recommend that you give it a shot because it's gonna make the whole fight a lot simpler, more consistent. When he does his body slam attack, there's a big quake around him, but there's actually a pretty decent area you can be in front of him, uh, and you can attack his head as he comes down. Just be careful not to be too close, otherwise you'll be hit by him as he comes down. His roar also has a deceivingly short range. If you're too close, you'll take a ton of damage from his roar, just like Tigrex, but like again, it's a lot of damage. You really need to avoid this attack. So if you ever see that coming, and you're, like, at his side or behind him or something, try to roll away as much as you can, because if you can get to the place where you'll be hit by the, the roar and not the damage of the roar, that is ideal in that situation. Obviously, perfect situation would be to avoid both the damage and the roar, and to be able to hit him as he comes down. Also keep in mind, when he does come down from that roar, um, his head has a hitbox and will knock you back. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it's disruptive and will interrupt your attack, so. Additionally, when it does come down, it'll come down on his left side, so there's a bit of a safe area, I guess you could say, on his right side. One thing about the beam attack is that it's gonna be kind of hard to hit his head. His head goes way up and kind of stays there for a bit, so I would recommend just attacking his leg when this happens. I recommend you be by his head and attacking his head, both because it has a good hit zone, as well as when you're in front of him, you can kind of more easily get away from that roar. I believe if you're like right in front of him like I am here, uh, like in the place where you would be to attack his head, you'll only really be hit by the roar and you'll never be hit by the damage. And then of course you can back up a bit like I did there, and you can come in as he comes down. Also of course the tail spin is a perfect time to attack, just like with the Cantor. 
I highly recommend you take advantage of it and just avoid the tail spin because being snowmanned, as well as the damage that happens with it, is really disruptive and could get you killed. Also, when you are by his head, try to favor his right side. That's if you're facing him, that's your left side. The reason is because, of course, his tailspin happens on his left side just like that. So if you're on his left side, you may be in a position where you can get caught out. But if you're on his right side, if he does it for some reason, then you'll be already in a safe place. There's the swim attack again. Again, it's intimidating, but once you get used to it, it's not too difficult to avoid, honestly. If you want to cut his tail, if you're ever close enough to his tail, feel free to swing at it. His good hit zones that I can remember is his head, his legs, and his tail. If there's any other ones, I'll just pop it up on screen with text, but... Also here, try to recognize when he's doing the taunt. A lot of this game is really just recognizing what move the monster is doing. Like, I mean, you've been playing this game for quite a while now, so that should be relatively obvious, but like, really with this monster, there's a couple of tells that are very telling uh, as to what he's going to do. Like that one, he sort of braces his arms and lowers his head. Um, for the tail attack, he makes a specific sound. When he's going to jump, like that, he puts his two front arms forward first and then jumps, you know, stuff like that. You need to be able to recognize what is happening, what's going on, what's the current game state, right? Um, as soon as possible because then you can be able to react to it. Just like that, try to run close to him, position yourself properly, because uh, there's two possibilities when he goes under. Again, he'll either do the swim attack like that, and you can avoid it like that if you're close enough, or he'll do the underground burrow attack, and in which case he'll either go to a different part of the, the level, which you can tell if you paintball them, it'll just show you on the map, or he can come up at your feet. And if he does that, I recommend just kind of running past him, and just keep running. Don't. If you think you're safe, just keep running until you get a. Uh, until you're sure. Same with this. Actually, if you avoid his his swim, don't stop moving, just in case you like aren't quite in the safe area, right? Just keep running, keep running, and then once you're sure, then you can stop. You can use an item. You can use a whetstone. You can use a power seed, etc. Whatever, right? While the head is the primary target, don't shy away from attacking the leg if the opportunity presents itself. Think of attacking the leg as a long-term sort of goal, right? If you stagger it once, he'll become he'll flinch, and if you stagger it again, he'll topple over, and it'll give you a big opening to pretty much whatever part of the body that you're buying. Uh, most likely, it's going to be the tail, which is a better hit sound than the legs. Uh, but if you, by chance, find yourself by the head, then you can just kind of let loose. Here's the Ice Beam again. Again, you really just don't want to be anywhere in front of him. Uh, and if you enrage him, he'll go directly into the roar, which is really unfortunate. If he's ever not enraged, you can tell because he's breathing like the white uh, smoke out of his mouth, I believe. If he's ever not enraged, you gotta be kind of careful that one of your attacks will send him into a rage, which will cause him to roar, interrupting whatever he's doing, which honestly really sucks, but you just gotta be aware of it. As you can see, I kind of took advantage of the opening uh, from him coming down after a roar. There's the shovel attack. Those rocks will try to track you for a bit, so if you're ever not sure about where the rocks are falling, just look at the shadows and try to avoid them as best you can. If you can't see the shadows at all, just try to get under him, because the rocks will never... they can't reach you if you're under him. Also, whenever you're in front of him, you only really want to attack him when he's turning or otherwise not going to choose an attack, because there's always a chance that he goes into his dig, which will hit you. There's also a chance he does a bite or some other attack, which is fast enough that you won't really be able to avoid it. This is just kind of funny. Uh, a lot of Yukimosa's attacks are slow enough that you can sharpen if you're careful, especially if he's not enraged at the time because he's faster when he's enraged. And 
And here we have our first topple. Again, you'll usually find yourself by his tail, which is not a bad thing. Especially if you want to try to cut his tail. The tail gives you two carves, so it's not a bad idea. It also has a pretty decent hit zone. Here's another Roar. Again, he can kind of do this at any time, so you kind of have to be wary of it. And being by his head and attacking his head will make avoiding it a bit easier. And then here, as you can see, my next attack sent him into his enraged state, which caused him to roar again. Similar to a Cantor, Eukonlos is very big and lumbering and slow, which means that if he's ever doing a move such as this one, where he's otherwise not really attackable, it can be pretty annoying and just kind of waste a lot of time. Just try to be patient, don't get too greedy, don't try to make the hunt any faster than it has to be because you may just end up making a mistake, and you can only make so many mistakes per hunt, so just try to make as few as you possibly can, alright? That there is his charge attack. Again, it is pretty much exactly the same as the Cantors, as far as I can tell. It can be pretty annoying and hard to avoid, but I honestly don't really see him doing it too often, so I don't think it's terribly relevant. You do need to be aware that he can do it, but it may not really affect you too much. There's his shovel move again. Again, as you can see, it landed like right by his back leg. If I was not under him at the time, I would have been hit by that. It does a lot of damage, and it will snowman you, which could get set you up to be hit again. If you're ever snowmanned, remember that you can spin your analog stick to get free faster. Try to do this in a place that you won't get hit from the recovery animation, because again, remember, you do the flex once you recover from snowman. If you really want to be freed like really quickly, Try and be hit by his arms moving when he turns. It does very little damage, but it will remove like all of your red health, so you won't be able to recover any of that if you have a lot of red health, which if you just got hit by a move that snowmans you, you probably do have red health. It's your call. Red health, you know, recoverable health in a fight like this might not really be worth considering. Having more health is kind of more valuable in general than, you know, possibility of just recovering stuff, but it's up to you if you feel confident. And speaking of confidence, this is where mine completely runs out and I give up and I throw my controller at the wall and I'm just kidding. But yeah, oof, ouch, owie, my entire body and all of my bones. <laughs> bone hurting you can lose. In this situation, I've lost my health buff from the kitchen, and I have my max potions equipped. I recommend that you heal with mega potions and keep max potions just in case you cart. Having that little bit extra health in this fight is actually very important, because he does just so much damage, and having a max health bar may cause you to survive attacks that you normally otherwise wouldn't. But again, if you're feeling confident, if you ever get taken down to like 1 HP, feel free to use a max potion, but again, I just recommend that you use it to regain your kitchen buff, basically. When he does his burrow move, make sure to sheath your weapon so you can run. You never know if you need that extra bit of speed. If you're ever snowmanned when he does his swim attack, remain calm. I've dodged his swim attack while snowmanned before, um, and you can do it too. It's it's not too much different, uh, considering, you know, you, you can still run and everything. So just try to be, remain calm and try to avoid the move like normal. His big leap attack uh, has a quake right there when he lands. Try to avoid that. Don't get too close too soon. Try to wait for his 
two arms to come down and then you can approach. Again there, he did his shovel move and I wasn't quite sure if it was going to hit me or not. Also, that right there, he's doing his taunt and his tail comes slamming down. Here's another topple, I'm going to attack the tail some more. And I really want to get that tail cut, so I, I focus on it a bit. Again, the tail cut is optional, but it is two free cards, so... I hadn't used the max push in until now because I was kind of wanting to be hit first, but honestly I kind of decided that Yuganlos, if he hits me, may even just do my entire health bar, and I wouldn't be able to use the max push. Also I just lost sharpness, I highly recommend that you retain purple sharpness as much as you possibly can. Yuganlos has a lot of health and the defense modifier doesn't help things at all. You need as much damage as you possibly can get. The 1.3 multiplier from white sharpness compared to the 1.5 from purple is just a world of difference. The 20% extra damage is, I would say, borderline necessary for you to have any semblance of a good time in G rank in general, really. So make sure you keep your weapon sharp. Seriously, keep it up. Make sure you have purple sharpness. It's really important. Also, this weapon requires a heavenly scale, I know that might be pretty annoying. There are ways to try and get Rathalos to drop a heavenly scale, Silver Rathalos, and that's flashing him out of the air I believe will cause him to drop a shiny which has a chance, and cutting his tail off and carving it also has a chance. I recommend that you go in, get the shiny, try to cut his tail off, carve the tail. If you do get a heavenly, just have him kill you three times so you can leave the quest and keep that heavenly. If you don't get it, just abandon or just honestly restart your PSP if you're playing on a PSP or the emulator. Just restart because you can then keep your kitchen buff and not have to get it again. Honestly, it's kind of annoying, but it's not really too bad of a farm. I got extremely lucky and got it my second time. But honestly, just the damage output of this weapon for Yukimos is just very good. I highly recommend that you get it because, again, this is the end of the game. There is no monster like after the- I mean, uh, there is Fatalis, whatever. But you know what I mean, this is the end boss, so you really want to prepare as much as you can. The general philosophy of my series has always been to try to get equipment that isn't, like, annoying to acquire, and this is, like, the only time that I'm kind of breaking that because, again, this is pretty important that you prepare as much as you possibly can. And at this point in the game, it's actually worth it, because this is, like, the best fire longsword in the game, so... Alright, so this is not an ideal situation, but you gotta do something for me, alright? Don't panic. Remain calm. When you get hit, you can't do anything, so just observe what's going on. Once your character recovers, then you can take action uh, from what you've observed, and in that situation I saw that Yukimos was going under, so it could be one of two moves, right? That's what I saw, that's what I observed. I recovered, and I dealt with it. I noticed that it was not the swim move, fortunately, although I was prepared to be able to avoid that, like I normally have. But I noticed that he was coming for me, so I tried to run past him, and I kept running until I knew I was safe. And a bad situation like that could have gotten way worse. I could have just died there. But you really gotta stay calm. I just got smacked by Yukimos' shovel chin. Um, that was pretty funny. And of course, his, the roar from his beam. So again, bad situation, remain calm. I need to heal. That's my priority right now. My camera zoomed out, so I know that I'm probably going to be stunned. He just burrowed. There's the swim. I avoid the swim. I run for a bit, and then there we go. I heal. Also, I'm trying to ration my mega potion, so I use a regular potion to heal a bit of the remaining health. So this is a bit unfortunate, 
As you can see, I sort of hesitated when I saw his swim attack. When you're sprinting, you want to be running in a circle when you turn, because otherwise what I just did was I was facing one direction and then I sprinted in the other direction. And when you do that, your character does a little animation of them turning around, which can kind of mess up your, your positioning and timing. It's really minor, but it matters just enough, right? So when you're turning, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, most players will turn in a circle rather than just going from one direction to the other because your character does that little stutter sort of animation. And sometimes that's just enough to get you hit. A very similar effect is after a panic dive, your character will always do a sort of stutter stagger animation when they get up. You can avoid this animation, which can save you or at least give you more control by either holding down sprint and sprinting as soon as you get up and then you can let it go immediately, or by rolling. It's such a small thing that it's basically an advanced thing, but it's worth remembering and it's worth keeping in mind. So hey, if you made it this far, I hope you're having a great day. Um, what do you think about the voiceover thing, you know? I figure it's a nice thing for people to be able to kind of just listen to the video uh, without having to watch it necessarily for people who want to do that. I was worried about this video being too long and not really having enough in it, but I feel like I'm having a decent spread of like talking to gameplay, I guess, right? So that like there's a reason to watch it rather than it just being a long fucking Yukimos hunt, but you know, tell me how you feel about it. Maybe, you know, leave a comment. And hey, you know, like and subscribe, right? <laughs> Hope you're having a good one. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the tail cut. That feels good. But now I gotta survive. I would highly recommend that you do not carve the tail unless you're in multiplayer until Yugenlos is dead. Uh, <laughs> he is slow, but you just, you don't want to get caught out just in case he does like the ice beam or some shit. Yeah. That would not feel good. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was going to turn there. So he's doing the burrow attack here, but I don't have him paintballed, so I can't really tell where he was at. Remember that regardless of the sound, if your screen is shaking, Yukimos is somewhere under you and you really gotta be careful. Try to pay attention to where he was. If your screen starts shaking, that means that he's coming towards you, so just make sure that you run past him. Because if he's coming your way, and you go his way, and you keep going, he'll have to stop to come up, and if you time it properly, you should be able to pass him as he passes you and avoid being hit. As you can see here, I was caught in a combo for a bit, and he started to roar. The only thing I can really do at a time like that, specifically attacking his leg and not his head, is if I'm quick enough and notice it in time, try to roll away as, as far as I can, because getting hit by the roar damage is really just not a good idea. Also notice here that because I cut his tail off, the range is lower and the snowman effect is actually removed from the tail. I think that's pretty interesting. It definitely makes it easier to deal with.
Right here, he just so happens to be pretty much exactly where he was going to burrow to anyways. He was just turning underground. Notice that when he's burrowing, he usually turns towards you before he comes up, I believe. And that takes time. Like, he, he turns kind of slowly and you can hear underground as if he was moving. Try not to let that confuse you. I made this series because I felt inspired by the lack of videos like it, in the style and or quality that I would have preferred. I didn't think I would get so much support and interest, but having you all tune in when I upload and stream really helps keep me going and I can't say that enough. Looking back at the start of this series, I can somewhat remember all of what I was going through when I made them. I've always liked the idea that someone could see or hear something that I've made and have it act as a sort of anchor for that time in their life, something that can bring them back to that. I just hope that the times that you remember are good, and that the memories you make in the future are good. If things aren't so great right now, try and hang in there, okay? A brighter dawn really could be right around the corner, you can't know for sure, but you have to be there to see it. Be good to yourself, be good to others. You never know what someone's going through or what may happen to them, how long you'll know them for. Do your best to be mindful of the people you know. You know how it goes. Give your mom a call, give your dad a call. I know that doesn't work for everyone, but if you get along enough and you still can, don't forget about them. Or one day it may be too late. I don't want you to have any regrets. I try not to project a lot when I'm trying to be encouraging, but I guess I can't help it all the time. I can really only try to encourage someone like myself because I only really know myself. I know sometimes I maybe touch on some heavy stuff, just like now, but I wouldn't say it if I didn't think it was important to hear. And there we have it. This is actually the first time I've cleared Yukon Los, though. I got really close in two attempts before this. With some luck and practice, I'm sure I could get a better clear, but that's not really the point of this video. We did it. For Humanite's been cleared. Not all of my videos are perfect, but hopefully I've achieved the goal of this series, which was to help those currently playing it, encourage people to play it again or try it for the first time, and to be nostalgic for those who have played it, and hopefully interesting to those who haven't. This has been an incredible journey, and whether you're new or have been here for a while, I want to thank you so much for following me along for it. And also, if you've made it this far, with or without my help, you should be proud of yourself, really. Remember, if this quest is really difficult, try and play in multiplayer if you're able to. I've made my videos specifically for a solo perspective because I know that some people just won't be able to play in multiplayer. If you're able to, this game really is made a lot better through multiplayer, especially if you have some friends or people that you know that you can get into voice chat with. I'm not done making Freddy Me Night videos, there's definitely some things I need to finish up, but this video marks the end of my main planned series. There's some things I haven't done that I may cover later on, and I'm still always open to suggestions. If this is the first video you've seen by me, I've covered the entirety of Freddy Me Night's key and urgent quests. Check my channel's playlist section to see more, I like to keep things nice and organized there.
If you made it this far, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider liking and subscribing. There are links in the description to my second channel and stream archive channel, as well as my Twitter, Twitch, and Discord if that interests you. If you'd like to support me and my channels, you can become a member, do a super thanks on this video, or pop in when I'm streaming and hand me some super chats. It all really does help. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day.